Yeah, very good. That's pretty neat. Uh, this is the first time to use it. I have a uh, Icom 5100 in my house that I use a DV Mega to get on. And our club has just purchased a uh, T-Star repeater. So we're trying to get that set up and working in this area. Uh, we're in West Texas, Big Spring in West Texas. set up our Raspberry Pi and get things running, we're going to need to download an image for this card, which would be the operating system that actually runs the Raspberry Pi. The cards don't come with that operating system generally on them. This means that you're going to need to be able to plug this card into some other computer, like a laptop, for example, that has a slot that will take an SD card. If you don't have a slot for an SD card on another computer, you can purchase this little dongle that plugs into a USB jack and gives you a spot where you can plug in your card. Some of the best tutorials online can be found at adafruit.com. Simply go to their website. At the top of the page, click Learn, and then in the search window, type PI, PI Lesson 1 press enter. The lesson we're looking for is right here. Adafruit's Raspberry Pi Lesson 1, preparing an SD card for your Raspberry Pi. We'll click there. and You'll find here a complete tutorial with all the instructions that you need to get your Raspberry Pi up and running so that we can start installing the DSTAR software. Follow these instructions carefully. When you're following the instructions for Fedora, be sure to pay close attention to step 3 that you see here. You want to be sure that there are no other devices attached to USB ports on your computer that contain memory that you might accidentally erase. These are the files the Adafruit tutorial told me to install. Right now I'm going to plug in the SD card and make sure I know what drive letter it is. This little window pops up. I think it's going to be drive E. I'm going to say continue without scanning. And then I'm going to simply close this. You can see here that it's definitely drive E. Let's go into the Fedora folder and find the application right here. And once that's running, first I'm going to find the source. Here's our Wheezy Raspbian image right there. I'll click open. Now for the device I want to be sure that I have hard disk drive E, this 30 gigabyte card that I've put in there. I'm going to click the button that says install. I'll say yes. Now this process can take some time. We'll come back to it later. Now that it's completed, we'll close this window. It's time to take our card out of the computer and give it a try in the Pi. We'll put the card inside the Pi and start hooking up the hardware. You'll notice that I don't have the DB3000 breakout board attached. When I tried this the first time, I found that some of the software was difficult to install. When I removed the, the little breakout board, things worked much better. We'll add this to the board later. We'll start by installing this little micro USB plug into the jack right here. This is what's going to power our Raspberry Pi. The other end of it will go into our power hub, which I will install last. We'll need an Ethernet connect cable. That connects to my cable modem. Here's the HDMI plug. We'll put that in there on that side. Now let's make the connections to the uh, powered USB hub. We've got a USB here, 
for the, the mouse for a keyboard. I put the little sound card dongle on the extension cord so it'll be easier to hook speakers and microphones up to yet later. I won't need to do that for some time, so I'll just plug that in there. There is a connection. It's got a different style into it. This is the connection that actually goes to the computer in in our case. This will be the Raspberry Pi. That'll be plugged in over here. And that's the only USB cable I'll hook up to the Pi itself. So we've got most of that ready. Here's a little power cord which I need to slip in here. And the red light comes on. So now all that remains is to hook the Raspberry Pi up to the powered port here. I'll move some cameras around so that you can see the screen on the monitor and we'll see what happens when we plug this in. Right away we see quite a few lines of text scroll by as the Raspberry Pi boots itself up. As you can see, it's pretty busy right now. The first time you boot up a new image on the Raspberry Pi, you'll be taken to a setup routine where you can set regional parameters and configure the Pi the way you want it. Again, the Adafruit tutorial and other tutorials that you can find online will help you with these settings. Pay close attention to the keyboard settings. There's a big difference between English US and English UK keyboards. If you get the wrong setting, you'll find that when you type a quotation mark, you'll get an at sign, and when you type an at sign, you'll get a quotation mark. There's a few other differences as well. When everything's up and running, you're going to be asked to log in. Enter PI, PI, and then as a password, enter Raspberry. Later, when it comes time to configure the dummy repeater, you're going to need to know the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. To find that out, you can type hostname hyphen capital letter I. And it tells us here that the IP address of my Raspberry Pi is 10.1.10.56. I'll write that down. Now it's time to install the software recommended by Northwest Digital Radio. We go to their website and click on blog and look for the directions for configuring the IRC DDB gateway and the dummy repeater on the Raspberry Pi. We've installed Raspbian on the Pi. Now it's time to do the Ambi server. There's a link for directions here. The first instruction says that we're supposed to edit a file. If you are like I was, new to the Raspberry Pi and completely inexperienced in Linux, you've just been confronted with the first of many obstacles. How do you edit a file in Linux? We need to find out. Searching the internet for help with this, I learned two things. One, if you're going to make changes to these files and you expect to be able to save them, you need to be doing that as a super user. In Linux, there's a simple little command that they stick at the beginning of lines that'll do that for you. It's the letters S-U-D-O, sudo. The S-U, I know, stands for super user. So this is something that the super user would do. Then the editor is called nano. N-A-N-O. Finally, the path and the file we want to edit. Slash boot slash config dot txt. One of the things that I learned early on was in these configuration files, lines that start with hash mark are commented out, which means that the computer is not going to execute any line that starts out with a hash mark. What I find interesting is that when we look in this file, all of the lines begin with hash marks. So there isn't anything in this file right now that the computer is doing. So the directions say to add a line, let's do that. I'll use the enter key to open up some space at the top and then the up arrow to move in there. And I'll enter the line that we're supposed to add. Now I'll use Control-X 
to exit. I'll touch Y to save. Yes. I won't change the file name, so I'll simply press enter. Now that I understand the editor, I'll use it again with two more files. By pressing the up arrow on my keyboard, I'm able to reprint the last command I entered and edit it. So I'll put in the path and the name of the next file. I'll do this with each file as I follow the directions from the web page. Now it's time to build and install DB3000D. I learned that the D at the end here means that this file is going to be a daemon. So the first thing we're supposed to do is go get these libraries and tools. Let's do that now. Some of these steps took a lot longer than others, but I have managed to do all of these. Now it's time to install and build the Pi wiring library from its source. The wiring Pi library may already be installed on your Raspbian image. If not, you can follow these four instructions to install it yourself. This next step throws a new hurdle into the path of a Linux challenged amateur. We're told that we should go to this website and unzip some files into our home directory. We're going to have to figure out how to do that in Linux. I may be a bit ahead of myself here. Before we can do any of those things, we'll have to have a Yahoo Groups account. And you have to sign up and become a member of the IRCDDB group. Go to Yahoo, set up your account, and sign in. That will get you to the URL listed in the directions. Okay, we're making a little bit of progress here. The next problem is that I've come to the proper page. I see the files that we're looking for right here on the screen. But this is my laptop computer. How am I supposed to get them onto the Raspberry Pi? The solution is to get a web browser running on your Raspberry Pi. First, we're going to need to switch over to a graphic interface. Enter Start X and press Enter on your keyboard. This will bring up a graphic interface. You'll find a web browser, Epiphany. I'll double click it and launch it. I'll use it to log into Yahoo and bring up the group download page. I found that by clicking on the two files that end in zip, first one and the other, I was able to download the file and then the graphic interface presented me with a window to unzip them. There was a small catch though when I got done. The solution was very simple. The directions say to unzip these files into your home directory. But the Epiphany browser unzipped them into a downloads directory. So I resorted back to the GUI interface to move the unzipped directories from downloads into the home directory. I'm using this icon down here in the corner to get into my file directories. Here's my desktop. Here are the downloads. Here's the two folders I want to move. I'll set this window over here, open it again, I'll go up one directory to Home, and I'll take AmbiTools, put it over there, and do the same with the IRCDDB Gateway. Now the two directories are in my Home directory. I think we're now ready to give all this a try. To do that, we need to install our breakout board. I'll begin by removing the power from the Pi. We'll bring the DB3000 over, place it carefully on the pins, and press it down firmly. I'll add some power, and again, we'll watch it boot up. Now let's run this test here to see if our DV3000 breakout board is communicating with the Raspberry Pi. We'll log on. And we'll type the instructions. CD, then CD, AMB tools, AMB tools, slash DV3000. There we are. 
If you type the letters ls, it'll show you the files that are there. Okay, we're going to run a test. sudo python ambitest 2.py. Well, this is good news. This is what the web page says we should see. I think this Linux stuff is starting to work for me. Now let's see if we can build the daemon. In the same directory where we just ran our test, we'll type the command make and press enter. For now, I'm going to skip these instructions that talk about various ways to run the daemon. I'm going to scroll on down to this section where it talks about putting this in our user bin. The instructions tell us to type this command here to install dv3000d in user bin and then to create a file with this text in it here. I'm going to use nano. Now let's try to create the file. We've got an empty editor. We'll put the text in there that's from the web page. Using the web browser, I highlight all of the text and then copy it with Control C. Now that I'm back in the editor, I simply right click and everything that I've copied is automatically typed into the editor. Again, I'll use Control X to save it, touch letter Y, and hit Enter. Next, we're supposed to use this command here to make this file executable. I'll highlight it and copy it here. And right click. That was simple. Now let's see if we can start our DB3000 service. sudo slash usr slash sbin slash service space dv 3000 d space start. I'll press enter. There it is. It started our daemon. That's a lot to cover in part two of this series. It wasn't my intention to create a how-to video, but more likely a how-I-did-it video. I wanted to show how a radio amateur, albeit a Linux Challenge radio amateur, could plug a DV3000 breakout board into a Raspberry Pi, stumble over a few Linux hurdles, and get this thing going. In part one of this series, we looked at all the equipment that we'll need for this project. And now as we finish part two, we've seen about the files that we need to edit and download to get this project rolling. In part three, we'll configure the IRC DDB gateway and the dummy repeater and actually get this thing running and talk to some hams on D-Star. And hey, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.